I loaded these five, and you can see they've all been marked, and these were CCI originally, but they've all been fired once. Now these I have loaded with a grain and a half of Unique. And I think I have this priming method down. Oh yeah, they got snapped to them. And then she drilled that can. But I'm, I am confident in my method now. Well, if anything, they might be actually a little higher velocity than a standard 22 because of the way I'm priming them. But I'll go into that later. But I think I can get total reliability out of these. Five for five. But I had a lot of confidence in those. But I'll go into why. But we'll go inside and do that. Now granted, I was more than about 20 feet away from the can. But they weren't shooting wild. All five were on there and all five come right on through. Okay, here's what I have been doing. Rather than trying to mix up some powder, put it in there and mix it around and all that, I have been pelletizing it. It's easier to handle and it's relatively safe. Now, nothing about this is going to be real safe. Uh, what I'm using for a mold to make the pellets are these ring type caps. Now you can blow these up even just taking them apart, but you see there's a little piece of paper over the material inside. If you take that out, you'll, you'll get this red kind of stuff. And by what I've been doing with this material is to actually dump a bunch of these caps out then we're, and you have to be kind of careful because, like I say, just by manipulating them, you can set them off. But they're not terribly explosive. But you get a bunch of them together and you could have a problem. But then I'll put them in a small container, then mix them with, a, well, like maybe 10 drops of this stuff, depending on the amount that you're doing at a time. But this is simply nail polish remover mix it in with that, then it's not so dangerous to handle. Once it's in a, a paste form, it's not so combustible. But then I add in like two drops of this nail polish, and that's to bind the stuff together. Now after that's all mixed up, I'll put it in the blue cover from off of these, because you can then you know, I fill one of these up, then I let them harden, and that's what this nail polish is doing. The remover will evaporate the acetone, and then you get one hard little plug. And I, I like these because you are able to then get in with a sharpened matchstick and push them out again. You know, because that's, once they're hard like this, like if you hit one of these with a hammer, or even, I think I could probably go between my fingers, but it would be painful. You know, this is a long rifle. What I'm working on here now are the CBs. Now, the difference, you know, with the long rifle, I used the same method, and then a grain and a half of unique over the top. 
These now, see bees are strictly the primer compound. But what I like about this method, that I can take this little piece of primer compound and just insert it into each one of these. So it's, it's relatively easy and safe to handle because that little plug will fit exactly in there. But now that's, you know, you can't just go and use them like that. But, and that's after they've been, you know, I flatten the bottom and run them through the sizing die. Because I will say this, the sizing die did not work for those wrecks, long rifle. You know, that's where it, it had a tendency to want to, you know, squash them. But for the CCI, it works perfect. Even on the shorts, it works. Now, like I say, this material is made out of the caps that came out of here. That's why the red color. This material that I put in that's the gray color, that's actually the compound mixed out of the bags. Now, I won't go into what the chemicals are that are in there, but that is a basic problem I find with the kit that he should have... These should be labeled as what they are. You you shouldn't have mystery compounds. You know you should be able to tell exactly what it is because I figured out by the proportions what the material actually is. It's a Frankfurt Arsenal H48 priming compound. It's been around for a long time, and you can buy all the chemicals to do it. You know it's not a big deal. Uh, I don't know why he wants to do it in a secretive kind of way. But if you mix that up in the right proportions, and, you know, the proportions that he was using doing this whole dipper thing were slightly off of, of what the real proportions are. But if you do it in the right proportions, it, it is explosive. Okay, but now I go, after I put that in, I give them two drops. Of the acetone. Now the same thing can be done using a. Alcohol. I'm not sure if I got two or three. with a 10% shellac solution in it. And there again, the shellac is just working as a binder, the alcohol is just carried into the stuff in the first place. Now this dissolves that little plug. And then you can squeak it around. You know, what I have been doing with these long rifles I made a little mandrel on my chainsaw sharpening tool that I can actually pop this on, turn that on, it spins it really fast, then I know I'm getting it out to the outside of the rim. Now these short little things, I don't know that I could actually do that, but I'm sure I can get it out there far enough that these will fire. Because this stuff, like I say, is very explosive. You know, if you put it, I did some tests with it on an anvil and just wrap it and it'll blow with considerable force. But like I say, the Zastro now is just to, to make it a paste again and then I'll get it out into the rim. I'm kind of just stirring it up now to make sure I get it all that acetone mixed in. Now, doing it in these little plugs like this, these pellets, like I say, it's a smooth, easy way to handle it. But, the normal priming compound in a regular 22 long rifle is about a quarter of a grain. This is more. This is about three quarters of a grain. But, that's why I say when I shot those, those 22 long rifle, okay, I'm, you know, a normal 22 is loaded with a grain and a half of a small flake powder, a very fine flake powder, I don't know what it is, 
but I loaded a grain and a half for unique, so I'm actually, you know, I'm kind of maybe a little over what they should be. No effect on that single shot. You could double it, and it wouldn't matter on that single shot. But on an automatic, it might show up. It might be too much for an automatic. And even, I, I suspect that these little CBs, where I will add no power powder to them, they'll, they'll just be this material, but I think they'll actually have probably the same force as what a regular 22 long would have, or at least a short. It ain't going to be just a little pop, it's going to be a fairly good bang, because you know, like I say, that's almost a grain, really, it's, it's like three quarter of a grain, almost a grain, is what each of these pellets weighs, partially because they've got sand in them, or a fine ground glass. That's what's in this priming compound. Uh, this particular envelope, this stuff in here is actually sand or very finely ground glass. And that's what gives the friction to make it actually fire. Uh, it's similar if you've ever taken apart those little snap cats that you throw on the ground and they blow up. It's the same principle because if you take one of them apart, it just looks like colored sand inside. In fact, that's what this stuff looks like when you take these out. It looks like colored sand. But that that grit in there is what's giving it the friction to fire. But, you know, these are, it's interesting to do this. There's no practical application to it. Though, by doing it in these pellet things, you know, it actually is pretty easy to do. And, like I say, pretty reliable. I actually haven't, since I've been doing this, I haven't had one knot go off. I just now was pushing the powder load up a little to see what they do. But with these 38 grain, you know, they were clocking along pretty good speed. Eventually, I'm going to run them over the chronograph and find out. But right now, I want to do, make up some of these and use these tiny 25 grain bullets and just see what happens. But these, like I say, no powder. They'll just be the priming compound itself. But I think that'll be plenty. But I'll get back later and then show the results of that. But uh, it's not hard to do. Uh, the kit is kind of a mess in that the, the directions aren't, you know, they tell you kind of how to do something basically. I don't know why they completely ignored the idea of putting a binder in there. Because without a binder, what I found was the ones that didn't fire before, I opened them up, dumped them out on a piece of paper, and you could see them, them coarse grains of pyrodex. And then if you tilt the paper and shake it, well, they're all the primary material laid. It had reverted just completely to a powder. None of it stayed in the rim. And because maybe if you did that and carefully carried it out and shot going straight up, maybe it would stay in the rim, maybe it would fire, but it needs a binder. But that's where that slack alcohol or the acetone and nail polish works. Now, you don't want to get too much nail polish in. If you've got a lot of nail polish or a lot of shellac in, it would be so hard that it really wouldn't want to dent the case. And you, you have to be able to crimp it to make it fire. But it's interesting. But like I say, this dye does work for CCI. It just didn't work for those wrecks. So I think uh, one of these days I'm going to load up a magazine full of these in my little automatic and give them a try. But I have no doubt that they'll work. You know, it's, it's one of them things. It's not really practical to do it, but it's interesting to do it, and I have learned a heck of a lot about primer compounds in doing it. But, like I say, you can do them out of these caps. Uh, there's not much material in each cap, but it makes a very explosive primer compound. In fact, I'll take this one outside and whack it with a hammer, and you can see what I mean. But it's got a lot of force. That's why I think this Frankfurt Arsenal this H48 mix that I'm using in these, I think that'll be plenty strong because there's a lot of force in there. But I'll give one of these a whack and you can see what they look like. Okay, that is what's made out of the snap caps. Those little ring caps that you can buy anywhere. Now this is out of that Frankfurt Arsenal 
H48 compound that was in all them mystery little bags.